This is it. This is my last video about Bulgaria. So I've posted a bunch of videos with specific adventures around the country, but I also wanted to make one final recap video to kind of tell stories and share things I learned that didn't make it into any of the other videos. And oh boy, there's a lot to cover. So first off, just a quick recap of the month. So this was August, 2023, and we were living in Sofia in the city center, but we also did a bunch of short trips to other places, uh, including all of these, uh, all of which are in Bulgaria, except for Istanbul. So I actually had a connection there even before coming. Uh, so before I came to Bulgaria, I posted an Instagram reel mentioning that I was gonna spend the month in Sofia. And this guy, Jason, who I did a fellowship program with in New York like 11 years ago, uh, he saw that and connected me with his old coworker, uh, Dimitar, who lives in Sofia. So we actually started talking before we came to Bulgaria and he gave us a bunch of recommendations. Uh, and he also warned us not to take a taxi from the airport because they'd probably scam us. So he actually drove us from the airport to our new temporary home, which was incredibly generous and a very warm welcome to this country. Uh, this guy you know, took time out of his day, out of his work day on a Tuesday afternoon to pick up two people from the airport and their dog who he had never met before. So if you're watching this, thank you so much. It made such an awesome start to our journey at a time when we were exhausted from flying across an ocean. And his generosity didn't end there. Uh, we spent another night hanging out at a bar where I learned a little bit more about growing up in Bulgaria. And another night he drove me and Lexi up to the TV tower on Vietasha Mountain where you can kind of look out at the city at night which was awesome. Going up there was something we wouldn't have done on our own and we didn't even realize you could go up there. So yeah, it was really awesome having a local to show us around. Now, I wanna tell two specific stories from Sofia. Uh, two times where something started as a total coincidence and then one thing led to another. Uh, and these turned into some of my favorite memories all month. The first story has to do with this towel. Okay, I promise this is gonna be more interesting than I just made it sound. So I had been going to the gym most mornings and because they don't provide towels, I'd been using this travel towel to dry myself off uh, and then usually going to a co-working space straight from there to work on videos and other projects. You know, just kind of trying to get in a normal routine like I had back home. But then one day after working out, I looked in my bag and I didn't see my towel. So I figured, all right, I guess I'll go back to the apartment and shower. I told Lexi I was coming home and she asked if I could pick up a pastry on the way. So I wandered into this little shop and got a banitsa. And when I was there, this other customer heard me order and she was like, are you American? Uh, turns out I was in this shop with uh, another American who had been living in Sofia for like 10 years. I also met her husband, Taylor, right outside the shop and their little baby uh, and their friend, Brian, another American guy who uh, was visiting Sofia for a few days. So I got her contact info and I asked what they were up to that weekend. Uh, and she said that her husband and their friend who was visiting were going to a pub crawl that weekend. Uh, and they invited us to join. So me and Lexi decided to tag along. We're going to a pub crawl. Our first pub crawl on our European adventure. Now, if you're not familiar, a lot of cities have you know various bar crawls where you pay a certain fee and then they take you to a bunch of bars, um, you know, usually kind of like shitty bars that are expensive and mostly target tourists, uh, and then drop you off at a club at the end. So yeah, definitely not like an authentic local experience, but these things can be a lot of fun when you're with the right people. But the people who tend to do these, at least in my experience, tend to be people in their early 20s who just want to get excessively drunk. But this one wasn't really like that at all. Like, yes, the premise was the same, but the participants were a lot older and more chill than I've seen at previous pub crawls. Like a lot of people in their 30s and 40s. Uh, one guy was even there with his 18 year old son. Some of these pub crawls tend to be at bars with you know blaring music where it's really loud, really hard to talk to anyone. Uh, but in this pub crawl, at least the first bar was in a park. So you could just take your drinks out to the park and actually hear people. It probably sound like such an old person to any 20 year old watching this. So this pub crawl was actually a lot of fun and it was nice because it wasn't all tourists. Uh, we actually had a local to talk to. Um, the husband of the woman who I met in the Vanita shop. Um, even though he wasn't Bulgarian, he had been living in, in Sofia for quite a while. So uh, we got to learn some things about the city, which you know, rarely happens at this type of event. 
Um, and then we actually spent most of the time hanging out with a group of people visiting from Sweden. One of my funny memories from this pub crawl was when I went to go order Lexi a vodka cranberry, uh, and the bartender had no idea what I was talking about. So I repeated myself, vodka cranberry. And she was still confused, so I figured maybe cranberry juice wasn't a thing at bars there or something. And then I realized I'm pronouncing vodka too much like an American. And not just American, but someone from Chicago, we have those ah sounds. So then I said, vodka, vodka cranberry, and she knew exactly what I was talking about. Now, like four years ago, me and Lexi spent about two weeks in Russia where I must have heard the word vodka like a hundred times. So. I should have known better. So one thing we learned on this pub crawl, uh, we actually learned this from the guide, is that Chicago is the city with the biggest Bulgarian population in the world outside of Bulgaria. Like apparently Chicago has more Bulgarian people than most cities in Bulgaria. The guide was telling us that when a lot of Bulgarians think of America, Chicago is the first city that comes to mind. And as someone who's been living in and around Chicago for 31 years, I. I feel dumb for not knowing this, but I had no idea. Like I have been hearing my whole life that Chicago has the biggest Polish population outside of Poland. Uh, I knew that one, but until I came to Bulgaria, I never realized that that same thing was true for Bulgarians in Chicago. And I'm curious, if you're watching this video from Chicago and you're not Bulgarian, uh, let me know in the comments if you knew this. Uh, I wanna know if this is some common knowledge that I somehow missed, or if this is something that a lot of people don't really know about. And learning this changed how I said where I was from for the rest of the month. Uh, traveling around as a foreigner, you know, I get that question a lot, you know, where are you from? And usually when I'm traveling outside of North America, I'll just say the United States, and then I'll clarify if someone asks. Like if I was from New York, I could probably just say New York and safely assume that everyone knows what country that's in. Uh, but Chicago's a lot smaller, so I don't wanna just like assume everyone knows where that is. But for the rest of the month, when people asked where I was from, I would just say Chicago. And it seemed like everyone had some connection to Chicago. They'd either been there or had a friend who had been there or have some family there or something. So anyway, it's crazy that this whole chain of events that led to this pub crawl all started because I didn't have my towel with me at the gym. And the twist is that when I went to look for it, it was actually in my bag the whole time, just at the bottom. So even though I actually had it with me the whole time, if I had seen it, none of this would have happened. So funny how that worked out. Another fun coincidence happened like a week later. So this one afternoon, I went back to that banitsa shop as I did pretty much every day and I asked for a minced meat banitsa, but they were out of them at the moment and they had more in the oven. So the lady told me to come back in like 10 minutes. So I came back later, got my banitsa. And as I was leaving the shop, I heard someone shout my name from across the street. Someone was trying to take a photo of a building and I was in the way of his shot. Uh, but then he realized he knew me. And it was actually this guy, Nick, from New Zealand, who me and Lexi had met at our hostel in Istanbul the previous weekend. And we actually knew that he was gonna come to Bulgaria after Turkey, but it didn't sound like we were gonna overlap at all in Sofia since we were headed to Varna that weekend. So we didn't bother reaching out, but it turns out we actually overlapped in Sofia for like half a day. And it's crazy that he just happened to recognize me on the street. So we spent most of the rest of the day hanging out with Nick and two other Kiwis who he had also met in Istanbul. This was a super fun afternoon slash evening and also a great opportunity to try out the cocktail bar near our apartment that we had been meaning to try. At this point, we had been away from our home and all our friends for about three weeks. So it's always awesome to have some new friends to hang out with, however temporary those friendships may be. So I'm really glad that Banitsa shop happened to be out of the one I wanted because if I had gotten what I wanted right away, I never would have run into Nick. I just love these happy coincidences that happen while traveling. Throughout our journey so far, this is the place that's felt most like we were actually living there rather than just visiting. And don't take that the wrong way. I'm not trying to claim that we became locals because that's not even close to being true. But we did more things that were just basic, boring life things than we did our previous month living abroad in Montreal. With that month in Canada, we knew we were gonna be back home in Chicago afterwards because we had some weddings and some other events to go to. So we could just kind of put the boring stuff off until we got home. But in Bulgaria in August, we knew we weren't gonna be back home until around Christmas time. So I did things like get a haircut. Uh, I've been going to the same guy in Chicago for like four years. So this is the first time in years that I've actually had to 
find a new place to get a haircut. And one day I randomly discovered this street that has 18 barber shops on the same street within about three blocks. So I just went there and walked into the first place that looked like it had someone available. The first 10 seemed to be busy, but the 11th one had someone free, so I walked in there. The guy didn't really speak English, but that wasn't really a problem, and I was kind of able to use body language to tell him what I wanted, and thought I got a pretty good haircut. We also did other life things like go to the vet and get Nala a checkup. This one actually was travel related because we needed to get Nala her EU dog passport. Uh, but still, going to the vet isn't something that people typically do while traveling. Another ordinary thing we did was see a movie. We hadn't seen Oppenheimer yet and it would have been long out of theaters by the time we got home five months later. So. Uh, we decided to see it in Sofia in IMAX, which was awesome. Now, I really didn't expect this experience to be any different from watching the movie anywhere else, uh, aside from the Bulgarian subtitles, but this was actually kind of a memorable experience, uh, aside from the movie itself. We went to the big mall of Sofia to see the movie, and we had some time to kill beforehand, so we wandered into the little Ikea in the mall, and I didn't even know this type of thing existed. Every Ikea I've ever seen is this massive, big building all by itself. But this little Ikea in the mall just sold the small, cheap items, like kitchen accessories and you know, various home goods. So it was basically a normal Ikea, minus all the furniture. I had always assumed that all Ikeas everywhere were basically the same, and I never knew these like little mini Ikeas existed. I'm sure this isn't unique to Bulgaria, but still kind of neat and very convenient because we actually did need some food storage containers. So then we went to the movie theater and found more people waiting in line for the concession stand than I have ever seen. I feel like in every theater in Chicago, there's like maybe a dozen people waiting in line for concessions but here the people took up the entire room. Maybe it has something to do with the food actually being affordable rather than what I'm used to where a hot dog and a soda can cost more than the entire movie ticket. Then we got to our seats just as the previews were starting. And what I found interesting was the mix of Bulgarian and English language. Like some of the ads were fully in Bulgarian, uh, some were in English with Bulgarian subtitles, and some were fully in English with no subtitles at all. And sometimes there was a mix even within a given ad, uh, like this one Heineken ad where you have people speaking to each other in English with no subtitles or anything, um, and then it switches to a Bulgarian voiceover in the same ad. So then the actual movie began, and like 10 minutes in, they paused the movie. Like I've never seen this before, where they just pause a movie in a movie theater. So Lexi asked the people around us what was happening, and if I remember correctly, it had something to do with someone not being in their assigned seat, but I don't know, if you speak Bulgarian and can translate or decipher any of this conversation, uh, let me know in the comments. Yeah, I'm a Cullen. <laughs> So this lasted about five minutes and then they played the movie again. And the rest was a pretty uneventful movie watching experience. I like the movie itself was eventful, but the, the rest of the experience of watching it was pretty normal. Despite feeling kind of at home in Sofia, there are definitely some things that consistently made me feel like an outsider. Most notably, the Cyrillic alphabet. With everywhere else I've been for more than a week, if English isn't their main language, uh, they at least use the, the same Latin alphabet. So in other languages I don't speak, like you know Italian for example, I can still look at a word and sort of sound it out in my head and that helps me remember it. But whenever I looked at a Bulgarian word written in the Cyrillic alphabet, I feel like it just kind of immediately left my brain. One of my regrets from my time in Bulgaria was not putting more effort into this. If I ever come back to Bulgaria, I think I'm gonna put more effort into actually learning the alphabet and sounding out the words so that I can remember them better. Another thing that was tough was the street names. Most of the street signs, at least in Sofia, uh, did have the, the street names written in um, the Cyrillic alphabet and the Latin alphabet, so I was able to read them, but I feel like most of the street names were different enough from anything I was familiar with that I still just had a lot of trouble remembering them. The last place we spent a month in abroad was in Montreal, uh, where most of the street names are in French, 
but I still got the hang of it pretty quickly, even though I didn't speak French. But in Bulgaria, I mostly navigated by knowing that I had to turn left at the kebab place and right at the yellow building, for example. Now, let's talk about the things I really liked about Bulgaria and spending a month in Sofia. And this is not a comprehensive list at all. Uh, there's a lot of things I like that I talked about in my previous videos, uh, but there are a few additional things I wanna point out. Number one is the food quality. I feel like the minimum bar for what people consider to be edible food is just so much higher in Bulgaria than it is in America. And yes, I realize this probably says more about America than it does about Bulgaria. But seriously, all the ingredients in Bulgaria just taste so much fresher, like just higher quality, especially the tomatoes. Oh my God, the tomatoes in this country are so incredibly good. I'm sitting here months later, still thinking about Bulgarian tomatoes. And I always thought that Italy was the land of great tomatoes, but honestly, I think they're better in Bulgaria. And to any American going to Bulgaria who wants to see the food quality difference in a very obvious way, I'd say go to McDonald's. Yes, I know that sounds really weird and I'm not claiming that it's gonna be like some great culinary experience, but the difference from an American McDonald's is astounding. It's like a different restaurant. Like, yeah, it looks kind of the same and the menu is pretty similar, but the quality is like a night and day difference. The vegetables taste like they're actually fresh. Uh, some of the sandwiches have legit arugula on them rather than some like iceberg lettuce that looks like it's a week old. The meat tastes like actual meat. Like altogether, it just tastes like real food. And yes, I've been to McDonald's and other fast food places in other European countries. And I know the food quality in Europe is just in general way higher than it is in America. But I think Bulgaria was just like a new level. And I know people are gonna laugh at me for saying this, but seriously, my first Bulgarian McDonald's experience blew me away after being used to what it's like in the US. By the way, I also liked the real Bulgarian food at real restaurants, but I made a whole other video about Bulgarian food, so I'm not gonna go into all that here. Another thing I really liked was the ancient Roman ruins throughout the country. More specifically, the fact that most of them weren't turned into some tourist attraction where you have to buy a ticket and wait in line to see them. We just kind of stumbled upon all these ruins while wandering through Sofia, and they're not like gated or anything, so you can just walk through them. There's even some ruins in one of the metro stations nearby. And not just Sofia, we saw similar ruins in Varna and Plovdiv. Actually, a lot in Plovdiv. My favorite were these ones where you could see them from underneath an H&M. So if I had to describe what it's like to spend a month in Sofia in one word, I'd say pleasant. This is just a really pleasant place to be. It's a lot quieter than most of the places we've been since then. Although part of that might be the fact that we were there in August when a lot of the locals are on vacation. But yeah, it's really nice. Like I don't feel like people are always constantly trying to sell me something. You can walk down the streets, even in the more touristy areas and not constantly have people trying to get you to come into their restaurants. The cars actually stop at crosswalks. I don't know if I've ever seen drivers that are this polite. If I was standing anywhere near a crosswalk that didn't have a traffic light, the drivers would still slow down and stop well in advance uh, as if they were coming upon a red light. This is in huge contrast to other places I've been since then, like Istanbul and even Naples, Italy, where the drivers will just go at full speed until they're literally about to hit you in the middle of the street. Yeah, I just felt much safer crossing the street in Sofia. And speaking of safety, uh, that's one thing I wanna talk about. This is probably the safest I've ever felt in any big city. And that's not to say that I feel unsafe in other cities, but in Sofia, I just felt like especially at ease the entire time. I felt like even if I totally let my guard down, nothing bad was gonna happen. Like in a lot of American cities, I feel like you can easily get into some sketchy situations if you wander the wrong way or don't have your guard up. Even in Montreal, Canada, which is supposed to be one of the safest cities in the world, according to some list I read, I still had a sketchy encounter where someone grabbed me outside of an ATM, but I didn't feel the slightest bit unsafe anywhere I went in Sofia. Now, I'm sure there are sketchy areas of the city if you go looking for trouble, but I personally didn't encounter any of that. And I'm not just talking about violent crimes here. Even petty crimes like pickpocketing are just 
Things I didn't really feel like I had to worry about. And Dimitar, the guy that me and Lexi hung out with a few times, uh, said that when Bulgaria joined the EU, a lot of the professional pickpockets actually moved to Spain and other countries like that where there's a lot more tourist money floating around. So yeah, if you wanna travel and feel incredibly safe, Sofia is a great place to be. But of course, no place is perfect. And although there are a ton of things that I really liked about Bulgaria, I don't want to leave out some of the things that I thought were a little less positive. And I hope I don't offend any Bulgarians by saying this, because honestly, these are pretty small things and they didn't really take away from my enjoyment of the country very much. So first is the service at restaurants. I have never seen service this so bad in any country I've been to. And yes, I know that in Europe, service tends to be less attentive in general than it does in the US. Like that's a cultural difference and that's fine. But in Bulgaria, it's worse than it is in the rest of Europe. Now it's not bad in every restaurant. There are some that have good service. I'm just talking about the average that I experienced there. If I ever wanted another drink or another side or was ready to pay and leave, it just felt like it always took forever to get someone's attention. And this kind of thing makes me understand why restaurants like Happy are so successful. So if you're not familiar, there's this restaurant chain called Happy that has a bunch of restaurants in all the big cities in Bulgaria. For the Americans watching, I'd say it's similar to like a Chili's or an Applebee's or that kind of thing. You know, easy to find, big menu, and you're not really going there to have great food. And also they advertise everywhere. When you walk into the mall, the door is just a big, happy advertisement. Ooh, they have sushi at Happy. At the airport, both the inside and outside of the jet bridges are covered in Happy logos. Your introduction to the country is basically, welcome to Happy Bulgaria. And every time I walked past a Happy, there were a ton of people eating there. And I can see why they're so successful. Like the food is fine, whatever, it's nothing memorable but the service is incredible. I only went there once, but whenever I wanted something, someone was at our table within like two to three minutes. It's such a huge contrast to almost every other restaurant we ate at. And I've actually heard from multiple Bulgarians that a lot of people decide to vacation down in Greece because the service is so much better there than it is in Bulgaria. The other thing that I didn't love as much was transportation in general. I'll start with the trains. And I'm not talking about the metro around Sofia. That was perfectly fine. But the long distance trains were not that great. The only trains we actually took were to Plovdiv and back. And that's because we couldn't really get anywhere else we wanted to go by train. And between Sofia and Plovdiv, which are Bulgaria's two biggest cities, uh, they're 150 kilometers apart and the train takes about three hours, which is a lot slower than just driving. Also, the train wasn't that comfortable. Uh, we were incredibly sweaty on the way back. Uh, there wasn't air conditioning and the window wouldn't stay open. On the plus side, it is super cheap. Like that three hour ride cost about five US dollars. So two people going round trip is like 20 bucks altogether. Now I'm from a country where our trains also suck. Like the US is such a car centric culture and they don't really invest in trains very much. And I've always looked at Europe as this shining beacon of light when it comes to getting around by train. But now I'm realizing that not all European countries are alike in this regard. Another thing I found kind of annoying was the lack of Uber or a similarly good ride sharing or taxi app. This is especially relevant while traveling. Now I usually try to get around on public transit so I don't often need a ride, but in in situations where I do need a ride, it can be pretty stressful to try to figure out how to get a taxi when I don't speak the language, don't really know where I am or really where I'm going besides an address. Not to mention all the taxi scams that target foreigners. When I first connected with Dimitar, one of the first things he told me was, don't take a taxi from the airport because you'll probably get scammed. I even found this whole guide online with paragraphs and paragraphs about how to not get scammed taking a taxi around Sofia complete with logos of all these fake taxi companies that are trying to masquerade as the real thing. And yes, I know taxi scams are common all over the world, so I'm not trying to specifically target Bulgaria by pointing this out, but it's so comforting to be in a place where I know I can always just pull out Uber and get a ride wherever I wanna go, even if I don't speak the language and even if I don't have any physical cash on me. And at this point, I don't even consider this to be an American convenience. Like it's in 72 countries, even some of the neighboring countries around Bulgaria. Like we used Uber in Turkey once, 
when we missed the last bus of the night and another time to get a ride to the airport early in the morning before the train started running. I'm filming this right now in Romania where we've used Uber quite a bit. Uh, and I've never been to Greece, but I know they have Uber there as well. And it just makes traveling through different countries so much easier. And Bulgaria actually used to have Uber, but they introduced laws that effectively kicked it out in 2015, which would be fine if there was a great alternative. Like in Southeast Asia, you have Grab, which is just as good, but I couldn't really find one in Bulgaria. I tried to use the OK Taxi app and I couldn't even get it to load. The one I managed to get working and used a few times was the Yellow Taxi app, but that was super buggy. The license plate would always disappear pretty quickly, so I always had to remember to take a screenshot of the license plate right away. It also looks like it's supposed to take credit card payments, but for some reason I couldn't get that to work, so I always had to make sure I had enough cash with me. Yeah, it's just a much worse experience than having a good ride sharing app. Now, like I said, none of these things really affected our experience in this country very much, and none of it's a reason to not visit Bulgaria. Like, this is all pretty minor stuff. Anyway, enough of the bad stuff. Before I conclude, I want to quickly go through some favorites. So favorite food, banitsa. I know I pronounced this wrong in previous videos, so hopefully it's closer to being correct now. I discovered this tiny little shop near our apartment that's basically just this one woman making and selling banitsas. The same one for my two stories earlier in this video. And once we discovered this place, we started eating these pretty much every day. Like getting a banitsa for me and Lexi to share just kind of became a part of my daily routine. We've tried a bunch of different varieties, and my favorite one is the one with minced meat. I know it's not the most traditional variety, but oh my god, it's so good. Favorite drink? Reikia. Now, I know there's a beer culture in Bulgaria, and I did try a bunch of Bulgarian beer, but none of it really stood out to me. Like, it was fine, but honestly, I wouldn't go out of my way to drink Bulgarian beer outside of Bulgaria. Now, I will admit that I didn't try much outside of the big ones like Gamidica and Zagorka, so I might have just missed out on the better stuff. Like, in America, there's a ton of really good beer, but none of it's from the big breweries that advertise everywhere. So I might have just not really known where to look for the good stuff. But what I did really like was Reikia. For those who aren't familiar, because I wasn't when I came to this country, it's a sweet liquor made from fruit. Like it's basically fermented and distilled grapes or plums or sometimes other things like pears or peaches. There's a lot of different fruits that can go into this. And once I discovered Reikia, I started ordering it at pretty much every meal. The commercially produced stuff is about 40% ABV. So alcohol content wise, it's basically like your average shot of vodka. Sorry, vodka, but it tastes so much better. I learned that it's pretty common to make big batches of Reikia at home, and that the homemade stuff is typically a lot stronger than the stuff you can buy, which I'd love to try someday. And also, same with homemade Iran. That's another thing I've only ever had as a package product. Which leads me into my favorite bar, which was the cocktail bar. Like, it's literally just called The Cocktail Bar. Kind of boring name, but really, really good drinks. We came there three times, and they had this cocktail called a Reikia Smash, which I became absolutely obsessed with. They also have this porcini mushroom drink, which sounds like it would be kind of weird in a cocktail, but it was actually really good. Favorite restaurant? I'm not really sure if I have one. Like, if I had to pick one, maybe I'd go with this one. Like, the inside was really pretty, and the food was really good. But honestly, there's so much good pastries and street food and stuff, and that became a large part of my diet. So between that and cooking, we weren't really at too many restaurants. All right, this video is getting really long, so I'm gonna speed it up. Favorite city? Plovdiv. Favorite nature area? The Belagratric Rocks. I made entire videos about both of those, so I'm not gonna get into it here. Favorite spot? Like, my favorite place to sit in the whole country is this one rock up on Vitasha Mountain, where you can look out and just see so much green all at once. It's amazing. I'm gonna end with my favorite quirky thing I learned. So apparently a head nod to a Bulgarian means no, and shaking your head means yes. Like, what? And people there aren't oblivious. They know that they do it differently from most of the rest of the world, but still, what? So would I ever come back to this country? Absolutely. As we left our apartment for the last time and made our way to the airport, I was really sad to leave. Even though we spent a whole month in Bulgaria, I feel like we barely scratched the surface. 
There are just so many more places to explore. We've been to Varna, but I'd love to check out some of the smaller beach towns along the Black Sea. We've been to Riala Monastery, but I'd love to check out the seven lakes in that same mountain range. And I'd love to go back to some of the places we already visited, uh, most notably Plovdiv. We only spent a day there, like we went there in the morning and came back to Sofia at night but I'd love to go back and spend at least a few nights there sometime. And I haven't even mentioned any of the places all throughout the country that I haven't even been near yet. I'm sure I could spend many more months exploring this country and have an awesome time. So will we actually come back? Well, that I'm less sure about because there are so many other countries we wanna to go to as well. But we do plan on coming back to Europe next summer again with our dog. So as long as Bulgaria stays outside the Schengen area, it's actually pretty likely that we'll return. And finally, to my YouTube audience, which at this point is mostly Bulgarians, thank you so much for watching my videos. I know I haven't always gotten every fact right and I've mispronounced a lot of Bulgarian words, so I really appreciate all the comments encouraging me to continue making these videos and giving me recommendations. Like I said, this will be our last video about Bulgaria, at least for now, but I really hope you stick around for the rest of our adventures because you are about to see a whole bunch of videos from Italy. We spent most of September living in Naples and exploring all around the Campania region. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those and I will see you in the next one. Dovizdene.